We're making really good progress on the water tanks this week. So we are changing what were the ballast tanks that held salt water into fresh water tanks. They are going to be smaller so that we can have more interior space for cabinets and seating. They're gonna hold lots of, a lot of fresh water for drinking. Also though, they're going to be big enough that we can use them as water ballast, continue to use them as water ballast so we can shift the water from one side of the boat to the other. This week we're continuing to paint the inside of the tanks and uh, finishing painting the lower, uh, the lower tanks as well as we're starting to glue the lids on and uh, start to seal the tanks up. My name is Matt. Follow along as I turn Duracell, the legendary ocean racing sailboat, into a comfortable cruising home. Last week we got the first coat of paint on the forward water tanks. This is a two-part epoxy-based paint that is approved to coat large water tanks without leaching any chemicals into the drinking water. It is made by Interline, which is the heavy marine division of Axo Nobel, who is our new paint sponsor. Dave, the local Axo Nobel sales representative and Duracell project fan, recommended this paint for our water tanks. We are thrilled to have them aboard to help with the project. Since I'm rolling the paint on, it is not covering as well as if I sprayed it, so I'm applying two coats, which seems to get me excellent coverage. I don't have to sand between coats because the open time, or recoat time, is 21 to 28 days between coats, depending on the temperature. After reading through the technical data sheets, I found that the paint has no VOCs, so I don't have to wear a mask while using it. The dried paint is very hard, and we are free feeling really confident about these tanks. The lids for the lower sections of the tanks also got two coats of paint, of course. The holes that you can see are access hatches for the lower sections of the tanks. Through these, I will be able to install plumbing and perform regular maintenance like cleaning and inspection. I have to get these access ports ready for lamination. I used a router with a half inch radius rounding bit to round off the edges for fiberglass to smoothly lay over the corner. I taped off where I have to grind off the paint to apply the fiberglass. Then I used my new die grinder to grind off the paint down to the fiberglass. What kind of lamination is happening today? So these are the lids for the forward tanks and I cut these, actually my mom cut these access ports in them and I don't want exposed foam on the access ports and so I'm going to, right now I'm putting thickened epoxy on it and then I'm going to uh, just do a, a thin lamination over the ring with just this is just a six ounce fiberglass tape. So why didn't you do this before you painted? Uh, I should have.
project is going to be full of these tedious little laminations. The top and bottom tanks have to be connected to each other. Here I'm cutting a hole in the part of the lid that will separate the top from the bottom tank and sealing the foam with a half inch piece of fiberglass pipe that is epoxied into the part. A lot of prep work has to be done before any epoxy project. I have to mask off any part that I don't want epoxy touching. This masking will have to be pulled off before the epoxy cures from inside the tank. Today we are gluing on the lids to the tanks. We, my mom and I already did the starboard side forward one and it went pretty good. So it's putting a whole bunch of epoxy onto the gluing surface on the flange, putting the lid on and hoping that the epoxy will squeeze out. And that way I know that we've got a good seal on it, but cleaning up that excess epoxy on the inside of the tank once we've got the lid on is more difficult than I hoped. And so we're hoping that this second lid is gonna go a little bit better. between the brown and the white? The white just has colloidal silica in it, which is like the strength additive. It adds a lot of strength. Okay. And when you add a lot, it gets it pretty like peanut butterish, okay. you know, pretty thick. But when it warms up, it tends, still tends to sag off. And so I add this purple stuff, which is, uh, it's like micro bubbles. I'm, I'm not sure exactly what it is. It's, a, it's for fairing mostly, so it makes it really okay. light, but it also helps keep it from sagging even more than the colloidal silica does, the white powder. It just makes it so once we glue it down and the epoxy starts to warm up and uh, want to slide out of the, of the seam, it won't slide out as easily as with if it was just the white stuff. It's, uh, yeah, keeping it in the, keeping it where it's supposed to be. Is everybody ready? Are you ready? I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Let's do it. Filling 
the seam along the hole where the cap lid meets the hole, just filling that with epoxy. I'm uh, trying to scrape away the excess epoxy. Blind. Blind. Aha! Aha! It's like the fish. Uh-oh. It's getting everywhere. <laughs> oh no. Your facial expressions are very entertaining when you do it. Every time I get some out, it's a to win. I think we got all the tape off. So we're gonna see how we did as far as cleaning up the epoxy. I'm betting my side's cleaner than yours. What? <laughs> give myself a B plus. We'll let the inspector be the judge of that. lids glued on the forward two tanks. Overall it went really well. The effort that was put into building the flange and to make the gluing surface was has worked really well. Uh, we got a lot of the gluing epoxy cleaned out from the inside and obviously this is not done yet. We need to touch up the paint on the inside of the tank where there's exposed epoxy, paint the holes and stuff, but it's a great start. I have to glue the lids on the aft tanks and then we could start building the uh, upper part of the tanks and we'll hopefully do that later this week so yeah very exciting to get this uh, part of the project done and did we pass the inspection have we heard yet uh i don't think we did <gasps> oh no no was it like a ransom for more kibble or something yeah she uh didn't find enough kibble in there. I don't know. The whole thing is, it's a scam. I'm convinced. <laughs> we have a new Patreon to thank this week. Hank is from Puyallup, just south of here. Hank has been sailing for a while with a lot of his, on his friends' boats, but he recently got himself a little Hunter 27. It's a trailerable boat that is, needs a lot of work. He sounds like he's rebuilding the interior of the boat. Uh, but we're excited for him to get back out on the water on his new boat. <clears throat> so thank you again very much, Hank, and hopefully we'll see you up here sometime soon. Uh, thank you again to all of our patrons uh, of the project. If you're interested in joining the Patreon community, you can find us at the Duracell Project on Patreon.com. See you next week. <laughs>